Welcome to Sunday Night Rhyme. I'm Father Andrew Apostoli, your host for this program. I'm a friar, Franciscan friar of the Renewal, and it's my pleasure to welcome you and uh, to be the host for this program. Tonight will be a, uh, an unusual one in that we, you will meet many of our friars and sisters. But before we get into that, let me uh, just remind you that if you have any questions or you have any suggestions uh, for programs, uh, whatever it may be, you know, please send your emails to Sunday Night. It's yes, yeah, Sunday Night Prime at ewtn.com. That's Sunday Night Prime at ewtn.com. Well, may the Lord give you His peace. That's the greeting of Saint Francis, and you're going to meet a lot of Franciscans on this program tonight, okay? In fact, we're going to name this program the uh, Franciscans Bringing Christ to the People in Haiti. Bringing Christ to the People in Haiti. Okay, uh, someone a long time ago had written to me, and tell me something about what your friars and sisters do during the day. And uh, so tonight we put together a wonderful program uh, a lot of what our brothers and sisters have been doing at a mission in Haiti. Um, it involves both our friars and our sisters, and I think you're going to find this an extremely interesting uh, uh, program here tonight because you'll see the varied talents and abilities and also the varied way the friars and sisters minister to the both the spiritual as well as physical needs of the people okay i want to begin by uh introducing our guests here at my left is father, is charlie moran okay hello, charlie father. welcome hello, hello father no stranger to ewd and he's spoken about the mission next to him is brother uh, colby okay hello, father. Thank you. brother welcome and finally uh, we have uh, Sister Sister Cecilia. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll it's nice to be little, with you, Father. A little wave. <laughs> okay. And um, uh, Charlie is the organizer of these missions to uh, Haiti, and uh, so I thought it would be appropriate for him to be on with the uh, with two of the. Uh, participants, one friar, one sister, who, whose emphasis um, at the mission was evangelization. Okay, maybe I could ask uh, uh, Charlie to give a little background, just a minute or two, sure. and, and then Brother Colby and Sister Cecilia. In 2003, um, Father Benedict Rochelle asked me to go down to Haiti with some of the friars just for a look and see. And we came back with a laundry list of every single thing that people needed. And then through the years, um, we've been going each year one, once or twice. This year I've actually been there three times. And each year we go on building missions. We build latrines. We build toilets. Uh, we do food handouts. Um, we work with blind families. We work with orphanages. So we, our work over the years has just changed drastic over the years. It's been really changing. And you've done a marvelous amount of work down there over these yeah. years. Brother Colby, would you just share a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, before I became a friar, I had a desire in my heart. I was driving this nice Jeep, and I just heard about third world countries, people starving. Like, how can I just drive this Jeep, make it look really nice, so that other people could recognize it when people are hungry? I just had a desire to be poor, to give. I never knew that the Lord was going to lead me to go to Haiti as a Franciscan friar years later. And uh, 
it's a real eye opener um, to actually be there with the people. Um, you hear about it, but when you experience it, it changes everything. And uh, you fall in love with the people. How many times have you been there? Uh, I've been there three times. Three times. Father, yeah. That's great, brother. Mm -hmm. That's great. Great example. And Sister Cecilia. So um, before I was a sister, I studied music. So that's how I got the name, Sister Cecilia. Um, and then I joined the community in 2001. And over the years in, in our community, I've actually had the opportunity to go down to Haiti four times now and um, with Charlie and his group every time. And it's been a real privilege for me also to be able to work with the people there. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, why don't we get right into some of the work you've been doing because uh, we want to be able to share as much as possible about that work, okay? Uh, I don't know which of you would prefer to start. Okay. I could start just um, to share um, that this past year I was able to go in January on the trip and I also went the year before with Sister Kelly Francis. She was the other sister with me. And when we were going around that year and visiting people's houses, she noticed that no one had a crucifix in their house, even though I would say a good number, maybe even the majority of people yeah, would be Catholic yeah. there. Um, and so her idea was for us to look, look into whether we could bring crucifixes down the next time we went. And so thank God through benefactors, we were able to bring about 2,000 crucifixes with us last year. And so when I was there with Sister Miriam, we went around um, and the brothers did the same. We went around to different people's houses and we offered them crucifixes. And we would even bring a hammer and nails with us so we could put them up for the people because even those simple things are not things they would have. But I, we had a tremendous um, uh, reception of just that little gift. People were so grateful for it because they can't afford something like a crucifix, you know. They might have cost just a dollar fifty or something for us to get, but people there can't afford it. And so my favorite story about, um, about mm. going around visiting and offering these was this one woman who when I showed her the crucifix and offered it to her, she just threw her arms around me and started singing and dancing because she was so happy to receive a crucifix and to have it in her house. So that was a real gift to bring um, this simple sign of the faith to the people. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I'm sure they'll, you'll find a lot of them still there, mm -hmm. you yes. know? Yes. That's Definitely. great. What a great thing. Yeah. Um, so that those crucifixes uh, will leave a lasting impression mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. You also did religious plays down there. Tell us about them. We did. Every year we organize a day of evangelization when we're down there. And so what we've done the past couple of years is to work with some of the children in the area and to get them to put on a play. And so this past year they did the play of the Epiphany because we were there around the time of the Epiphany. And so we got some children to be the wise men and um, Mary and Joseph and we even this was needed the last minute we borrowed a baby from the congregation to uh -huh. be our baby Jesus <laughs> and um, the parents were happy to do that but um, it was um, a great joy for the children to be involved in that mm -hmm. um, and even as part of that day we taught them a little song Jesus we adore you um, and we taught it to them in French and so at the end of the play the children sang this song and then I noticed all throughout the rest of the week, children kept coming up to us all week long and wanting to sing that song with us, just that, that little mm. way to connect with us. But they, they had memorized it in the meantime, and, and they remembered it, and they wanted to keep singing it. So that was a very beautiful part of our evangelization day. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, uh, after Mass was over and the presentation was over, then we handed out... Uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches mm -hmm. to everyone that remained mm -hmm. on the church grounds. Mm -hmm. Because by this point it was 11 o'clock, so this was like a huge thing because most Haitians don't eat every day, <coughs> they eat every three days, so this was a complete surprise. Food give-outs are also very important, aren't they? 
The people are very, very hungry down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you do some of those food give-outs? The, we, we fed, we fed 2,400 people uh, this past year. Um, they have to have a coupon in order to get food. Uh, we give out coupons to all of our missionaries that go down there, and as they see people that they think could use a coupon, they hand them a coupon. Uh, we give coupons out to the nurses and the doctors in our medical clinic. We give uh, coupons out to the little brother of St. Therese, who we work with, and they hand them out. Uh, Brother Wilfred, he's in charge of the blind families, so he makes sure that every single blind family gets a coupon. So we, um, that, that's how we organize it. And at the end, you know, if we have extra coupons, then we just usually give them to the medical um, aspect because they have, they had 1,800 people that came through it this year, so they always can use more coupons. Sure. The appreciation level by the people is immense. They'll wait online for hours very patiently to get the food. Um, and we, ha we bring in Haitian police officers because we'd, we're afraid, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, the, we're blessed in the United States. We have so much and they have so negative nothing. The one thing they have that outbeats us is their faith. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Brother Colby will agree. I mean, you go in and you pray with someone yeah. and you know, they just, their faith overtakes ours. And it's beautiful, like, um, the last day, the food handouts, thousands of people lined up. And the brothers and the sisters go up and down the line, try to keep peace. Father Antonio's ground with holy water, talking with the people. And I noticed a large crowd of people around this uh, young woman, and Father Antonio was there. She passed out uh, out of uh, lack of nutrients, thirst, mm -hmm. and uh, I went down to see what was going on, and I knew what was going on because it happened to me a week before just passing out I didn't drink enough so I ran back up and got a, a protein bar came back down and she didn't even have the energy to to eat mm. like I had to feed her herself and everybody else and give her something to drink and then on the way back up this woman approached me with a little baby you could see the baby's stomach extended mm. and just you just you don't want to leave without giving them something we try to keep order that they get in line so I gave her a little blessing with the St. Joseph's oil and said a little prayer. And as I was going into the compound where the nurse's uh, comp station was, I didn't know she was following me. And another one with another baby who had the same problem followed me in. And I just saw the swollen feet touched. And you could see the, the baby's face was in pain, you know, touching the feet. And St. Joseph is a patron of this, this mission. and. Uh, I was able to go to the nurse's station and went front line without uh, any problems whatsoever and both of the women got served and um, just you just see the the need of the people and how little they have um, it's just yeah it just so they appreciate it. everything yeah. you can give them everything you can do for them and yeah. I understand you gave out 2,000 rosaries oh, there yeah. too yeah uh, um, so before the mission, we, we reach, reach out to a bunch of people to send in rosaries. It's, it's fantastic. Sister Miriam, Sister Cecilia, and us all get these rosaries down. <laughs> I get and boxes and boxes <laughs> in the mail. Yeah. People just mail us boxes. So if you've got rosaries, <laughs> we will gladly take them, <laughs> and they will gladly get to the right place. Yeah, and of course, candy. Oh, you told me the, the kids candy. love the candy. The kids love the candy. Yeah. Uh, where we stay, we stay with this um, religious community of brothers. They have some guest housing there. And so whenever we step out of the gate of their place, there, there's always a crowd of children just waiting for us. And they'll follow us wherever we go. And they know we have candy. Um, they also know we'll play with them, we'll smile at them. And they just love to be around us. So that's a real joy. You know, their joy is a gift to us. Well, so. if you want to reduce your, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> tooth <laughs> decay and whatever else, <laughs> you'll know where you can send some of your candy, okay? And uh, uh, so, sister, that's wonderful, the work of evangelization. This year we actually mm -hmm. sent 300, we brought 300 pounds of candy down and gave it out in a week. Wow. <laughs> it was six suitcases. Mm -hmm. well, it's been wonderful. We're going to have to take our first break now. So we're getting another friar, I think, another sister on. Okay, so uh, 
We hope you've enjoyed the, uh, hearing the stories of the uh, evangelization work the sisters and brothers are doing down there in uh, Haiti. We'll be right back, so don't go away. We've got some wonderful, interesting, also very interesting uh, and inspiring stories to tell you uh, in the, the segments to come. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sunday Night Prime. I'm Father Andrew Apostoli, your Franciscan Friar of the Renewal. Uh, we're your host for this program, and uh, we've seen a very interesting part of it already, and we have an another interesting part or two to also go through. Uh, tonight's program is entitled, Bringing Christ to the People of Haiti. And uh, we looked at in the first part of the program, a friar and sister who were mostly involved in the work of evangelization, helping the people to pray, providing rosaries and crucifixes, as we heard. Um, uh, but now we're going to go into a, uh, another part of the work in the mission, the medical needs as well as the building needs of the people there in Haiti. Remember, our, I introduced already uh, Charlie Moran, who organizes these pilgrimages to Haiti and has been doing so for quite a number of years. I think you mentioned Father Benedict. Right, in 2003 had me go. 2003, so, so 10 years now. 14. Yeah. It's a great, great thing. Okay. Now we have a new sister and a new friar, uh, okay, for this second part of the show. And uh, the, the new sister is Sister John Paul, okay? And the new friar is Father Innocent. Father Innocent, okay? Uh, maybe I could ask you, uh, Sister John Paul, would you just say a little bit about yourself? You have a good, interesting background to go to do missionary work. Yes, yeah. So um, I became a nurse uh, in college and uh, went into neonatal intensive care nursing. So preemies and sick babies was my specialty. Um, and I actually desired, since I was in high school, to go on a medical mission, but it just never happened. Uh, and then in 2011, I had the opportunity to go down on the January trip to Haiti and to actually work on a peds team, a pediatric team, in the medical clinic for the week. And it was like a dream come true, uh, especially being able to go down as a bride of Christ, um, not just as a nurse, but to, to bring that relationship that I have with the Lord mm -hmm. and being a consecrated woman, a different dynamic to the whole thing. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, because you're not only um, uh, bringing them health of body, but you're also mm -hmm. telling them about Christ's love for them, the, the life of the soul. Definitely. Very good, sister. Yeah. I know you have a lot to share. And, so we'll be getting to that very soon. And Father Innocent. Okay, Father, could you share a little bit yes. about yourself? Thank you, Father. Yeah, my, my name is Father Innocent. Charlie likes to remind me, innocent in name only. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, Father, this um, was my first time down to Haiti this, this past January. Um, I've been a friar this year for 10 years. I, um, so I thank God just for the gift of being a friar and a priest. And uh, I've known Charlie for a long time. and. Uh, Charlie has been asking me to, to go to Haiti with him. And um, I've always kind of had the excuse, the idea that our, our work, as you know, Father in the Bronx is, is a very beautiful work. I have the great blessing to work at our shelter, St. Anthony's Shelter. And um, we realize that it's kind of a small village in itself. We, we invite 30 homeless men to live with us and we have 10 missionaries who live with us to do our work. And so I, I always kind of said that I was a stay at home dad and Charlie, I'm sorry, I just can't get away. It's hard to get away. But this year he got me. Or this past January he got me. Excuses. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was such a gift to be able to go with Charlie. Mm -hmm. And actually my dad went, which was really beautiful. Yeah. And uh, just to experience uh, the, a, a third world country, but also the gospel so alive. And uh, so uh, Charlie and I joked that like, I'm going to try to go this year. So uh, he got me hooked. I can't, I can't stop now. Mm. <laughs> 
That's beautiful. great. Charlie, would you want to say something? Oh, there? he's just an amazing man. I'm, I'm sorry, no, he's not a man. He's a father. <laughs> and uh, he just takes charge. Like, this was his first year down there. And uh, he just fit right in. And uh, he, he was in charge of logistics, getting uh, things from one place to the next. And this year was rough because there were times he had to go over the river. We had to wade through rivers to get to where the houses had to be built because we were building houses for blind families. And they just didn't live all that close. And I, I was worried because the, the terrain was so bad this year that if this had been our first trip to Haiti, I didn't think there was going to be a, a second one because that's how bad this, this trip really was. Well, I think Father, Father Eve, uh, Charlie kind of, kind of tricked me because as a priest, I was excited to go, but I didn't really know what I was going to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, but as, as uh, Charlie Moran, spending time with Charlie is always an adventure. And so uh, <laughs> I was up for anything. Um, and Charlie's like, well, hey, listen, I need you to lead a group of Haitian young men and uh, Brother Elijah, and I need you to figure out how to get these, what, 30 houses, latrines, 40, yeah. up mountains, down mountains, across rivers, you know, not, you know, like dirty rivers, um, to get them to these families. Yeah. And so I felt like with wood on my back, I felt like I was like a true missionary, like, you know, like taking this, these, these houses to, to poor families who were incredibly grateful, who were longing to have a place to live. Yeah. And it was such an adventure. Like, I can't even describe like the, the gift to be, to work hard, to give your life. Um, and we just so much joy doing it. But when we, let's say, got over the river and everybody was soaping, like sopping wet with, you know, like with dirty water that was probably had diseases. And we got to this family's house. They were waiting for us with such joy. And we, you know, this is your house. We brought, we've brought this for you, like see miles <laughs> and, and this is your house. And we prayed with them and there was just tears of joy that someone that the Haitian people like had never experienced such love and care. And uh, so it, it was just such a gift because as a priest, I was like, wow, I never thought that it like wood on my back, up and down, mount, falling down mountains, you know, through rivers um, that I would, that I would be doing this to, to live the gospel. It was just an amazing gift. I hear you were carrying that wood on your shoulders, <laughs> but that's a... Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it, it was a workout. It was, it was, but it was worth it. And I would do it all over again. Charlie said this next year, we'll try to make it a little easier. And I'm like, Charlie, hey, listen, this is the experience, you know, like sacrificing for the people. Oh, so you want me to read you all of this year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be but, careful what you say, Father. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me gift. ask you that uh, when you were bringing that wood, did you say that wood was for... Uh, the homes of the poor in general, or were they more specific? They, they were pr really particular for this year where uh, we were building houses for blind people. Blind people. Yeah, bl um, fam for families of blind people. So, again, that added another total right. dynamic that, um, that these people who were vulnerable, um, you know, especially in Haiti, you know, bl blind people are vulnerable anyway. Mm -hmm. And especially in Haiti, um, you would be homeless where you have no one to care for you. Um, we had, Charlie had set up with his team beforehand that we could really go build a house, build a place where these, we, um, these beautiful people could find refuge. Um, so mm -hmm. it's really, really powerful in that way. The houses were all pre-assembled where we stay with the little brother of St. Therese and, and then the, the sections were loaded on a truck and then we would drive, we would drive the sections as far as we could and then have to carry them from there. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it was up very steep hills, but the people also helped. It was their responsibility. I think we call them mountains. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> because they were like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, but the people had to help us, and they did. Uh, even with the latrines, um, they had to dig the hole, okay? And we told them they can dig a hole as deep as they want, and some of them 40, 50 feet deep. And then uh, we poured the concrete before we got there, and then Father would uh, just put the four walls up, put the two sections of the ceiling, and they were done. Yeah. Mm. Because uh, cholera in Haiti is rampant, so the only way that, and that's, you get cholera from poor sanitation. So we're trying to work on the housing section plus the sanitation section each year. You uh, did have a significant decrease in cholera, didn't you, after yeah, you started building um, the homes? We've been building houses since uh, 2005, and... Uh, then, after the earthquake hit in 2010, this little village had no more toilets left. 
So then we noticed that death ratio went up by 70%. So that's the next year. We just did solid latrines. We built 300 of them. And the next year, the ratio had come down to like 20% of the people, but <laughs> still had passed away. But I'm not done. You got more to come. More to come. Rome wasn't built in a day. Right. <laughs> uh, no. But like even the medical aspect, sister, you know, like, you, t why don't you describe some of the, the different uh, d things that you saw, mm -hmm. um, the, the malnutrition, mm -hmm. the, the kids with orange hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's things you would never see here in the States. So it's very odd to do all your medical training here and then to go down there. It's a totally different thing that you're dealing mm -hmm. with. But it is the malnutrition is, is just rampant and um, these children, yeah. You wonder how they function throughout the day with not even being able to eat every day. It's really in incredible. But even just the skin diseases, you speak about the water, the diseases that are mm. in the water. There's trash all over the place. Mm. And these things are just breeding um, bugs and, and different things. And so simple things that if you saw them here would be easily taken care of overnight. They live with on a daily basis. And so to bring them relief um, as much as we can with the supplies that we have, and even just to start to teach the families how do you care in a better way for your health and to encourage the moms um, to, to continue to move forward. And that's the whole reason they're there. They love their mm -hmm. children so much. They want so much for them. They want this better life for them. So they come with these things they can't explain. They don't exactly know how they got there on their children why they're acting the way they are and not being able to grow in a normal way. And we try to just reach into that. But a beautiful part of that is uh, being able to just speak with the families. Not that I speak Creole, but it's great to have the translators and um, to be able to just encourage the moms that you're doing a great job. It's obvious how much you love your children. You're doing mm -hmm. everything you possibly can to provide for them in this moment. And um, so reaching over into that, touching the heart and I know when I went down, um, I had been praying for everyone we were going to serve for months, and it was really um, that spiritual motherhood in my heart and how much I wanted to be with them. Uh, so to be with the children in a particular way was a real gift. Um, but the Lord shows you that as your heart is just reaching out to another one, He shows you all the ways to reach into that. One of my favorite stories was a little one, maybe one and a half years old, cute little curly hair, and um, I was holding him and he had a sucker in his hand. But he was looking at me like, I don't know who you think you are. You are so weird looking. And uh, so I give him a big smile and he doesn't react. I'm like, oh no, now what am I gonna do? So I just go, <sighs> well, I get a little smile from him. So I do it again and I get a little giggle. And I do it again and it's an all out laugh that he's giving mm -hmm. to me. So I just continue to do it and he's just laughing and laughing and laughing. And you can just see the smile on his mother's face. So for me, that was a moment of, you know, love goes beyond the language and beyond the very words that you can say, but it's, it's reaching into someone's mm -hmm. life and being able to touch those little things that um, maybe they haven't been able to deal with. So. You told me before we had had the program that the thing that struck you the most was forming like bonds with them. Mm -hmm. And you do, and you do that. And, um, I was a little concerned, how would that go if I couldn't speak their language? How could I tell them that I'm with them and that I love them? Um, but it was really, you have an immediate experience that you go beyond that. And um, the working with and um, just, just simply the sitting with or maybe carrying the wood with them, whatever it is that you're doing with the people starts to build up that relationship of simply, you know, Pope mm -hmm. Francis speaks about accompaniment. You're accompanying them in that moment in any possible way you can. And they feel that and it grows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Wow. Well, uh, I, had an, I had a similar experience, um, just the bonds you build and that, that it goes beyond language. And you, so you're, you're, you're pouring out your lives together, especially with the Haitian workers mm -hmm. that work with us. And, and uh, you can't, there's a language barrier, but the gesture of love, the gesture of Christianity is that presence, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're together and you like, over 10 days, you feel like you're a family and you're sweating and you're carrying wood and you're praying together and you're doing all these things. And there's not really much you can give someone. Um, but, but I was, um, I, I unfortunately got sick one of the days, or two of the days actually, and it was really pretty tough. And the Haitian young men came into my room and knocked on the door. And you remember, these young men have nothing, they're poor. And one of them had, um, had got me a get well card. Oh. And it was, I think it was like, I don't even remember what it was, but it wasn't like even a get well, it was like an anniversary card. Mm -hmm. but you could tell that he had found it. And you could tell that he like cried, he was like trying to say get well, but he, it was like flowers on the front. Oh. And he wanted to give it to me because he, there was just such a, he, there was such a care for one another. 
And that card was just such a, he, he came to my room and I was th like throwing up and getting sick, but he wanted me to know that I was loved. And that's like all he could give me, but I, I was like, there's Christianity at its best. Mm. Him coming to me in this bond that formed and giving me like an anniversary card. <laughs> it's like that was, yeah. a, you know, because that's the only card he had or he had found. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a real bond of, of love. Wow, that's, yeah. you know, when they, when they have so little and even receive so little, but yet they respond with such greatness, mm -hmm. yeah. great caring and gratitude. Yeah. So uh, that's, uh, isn't that the heart of the gospel? Yes. To yes. Show our brothers and sisters yeah. our love for them. Well, that's a beautiful thing. We're going to have to take a little break now. We've come to our second break in the program. And uh, don't go away. We've got a lot more to share with you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sunday Night Prime. I'm Father Andrew Apostoli, your host for this program. I'm a member of the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and it's been our pleasure tonight to have many Franciscan Friars and Sisters uh, to be on the show and do a presentation on the topic uh, for the program was um, bringing Christ to Haiti, to the mission in Haiti. And they're sharing their wonderful experiences. Um, and certainly, it really gives you a, a taste for the fullness of life Jesus has called us to, to be his um, missionaries, as Pope John Paul, as Pope uh, Francis has been constantly reminding us. We all have a mission. And uh, St. Francis was a missionary. He went to the Holy Land, uh, got captured, unfortunately, but uh, he helped to bring some peace between the Muslims and the Christians. In fact, uh, the, uh, the sheik there in Jerusalem said to St. Francis, had only all the Christians come as you came, we would have joined you instead of fought with you. So St. Francis was a great missionary and left a great missionary spirit in his order. So uh, we're happy to be able to present the experiences of some of our young brothers and sisters. It, I'm sure, you know, one interesting question that came to me, uh, brother, sister, um, what did you feel like when you thought, I'm going to go to, you know, to uh, Haiti? You know, here it is, one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, what what kind of thoughts may have filled your mind on that? Well, the first time I went was in 2004, and that's really Haiti's the first third world country I have been to. And so I didn't quite know what to expect. You know, I was picturing pictures out of National Geographic, mm. um, and I wasn't sure what would it be like for me in person to be there? Um, I was a little nervous, I would say. I was excited too. I, I was hoping I could do something to reach out to the people there. Um, my experience um, in my four different times in Haiti has been that not only do we bring things to give to the people, but they also <coughs> give us so much through welcoming us. I always feel like they're bringing me into their families and particularly with the mission that Charlie uh, organizes, because we go back to the same area every year, we've really gotten to know a lot of the people there. Right. And so they are like family yeah. and they treat us mm -hmm. like family. We've become brothers and sisters and, and these bonds that Father was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. they're, they're so beautiful and, and I feel like that's a real gift to me that they've been able to give me their welcome, their love, their smiles. Even when you have nothing else to give them except a prayer, they accept that mm. and they're happy for that. Mm. Every time I go, my wife says before I leave, please don't make any more friends. <laughs> you can't afford to feed them. Every time, because every time I, I make a friend, I feel like I have to send them monthly food. I'm already sending 12 people monthly food just to keep them alive. And 
emailing 12 people, you know, like, like Sister was sharing, that we, we become very, very close. You just do, uh, especially with the translators, because we do hire, um, we hire one translator for every two Americans that we bring down. So we hired 26 translators so we can understand and talk with them. So, you know, we all get very, very, very attached, you know. I was, I was moved, Father Andrew, by the excitement that I had heard about the, uh, the Haiti trips and the, Charlie's a legend, as you know, in our community. And so to be, to be able to go with him and serve with him was such a gift. Mm. But I was, I was struck with, you know, Father and Sister, we work with the poor, so we're, we're very, thank God, we're comfortable kind of we're working with the poor and like helping meet needs and bring a spiritual presence to the poor. But when you go to Haiti, like it's like, it's nothing really can, can prepare you. And I, I remember Charlie sitting with my dad on the bus and um, walk or uh, driving through this, these, these, this poor town and you know where there's a garbage dump and you have you know stray dogs and you know goats and then you have little kids who don't have any clothes on trying to find food. Like nothing can prepare you for that. You're like, it, it was just so moving. And, and I, got, I looked over at my dad, he was crying. Just because like this is, this is what we're called to, and try to reach out. So when we go for walks, we, and we, we, we try to speak and speak a word of life in these, these, these kids' life and the families. And, um, but like Sister said, the, the gift of the gospel that's lived there, like it's so, it's so rich because they have nothing. But when, when there's an encounter of love, um, like amongst the trash and, you know, and the, the, the difficult conditions, Jesus is there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was just so moved by is that like, you don't have to do too much. Like your presence is, is what makes yeah. it. And so you go for a walk and these kids come up and hold your hands mm -hmm. and they, you can't really, you can't understand what they're saying, but they hold tight. Um, it's the presence. That's the presence of Christ that I was so moved by um, on my first, my first trip there. Wow. Oh. Powerful. This past uh, June, I went back and we actually cleaned up the river area because it was really, really, really bad. And uh, I had 25 Boy Scouts of Haiti helping me. And I really didn't know how this was going to work out because I really can't do too much of that heavy work. And the Boy Scouts came in their uniform very proudly and they went down to the river. And within minutes, all the other little kids of the town started coming down. They wanted their blue gloves so they could be called one of the workers. <laughs> and we cleaned the river area for four hours. We collected over 500 bags of garbage. And the, the, the kids felt good because they were helping. And then the mayor of the town came over and, and said, if I sent him 100 bags a month, he would continue the process. So, you know, when we go down, we, we start little projects, okay? That's what I want. I want to see things just continuing. Not, not that I have to finance it. You know, that this, this was something that they should have been doing all along, okay, to keep their cleaning water clean. Because like you shared before about the water, in June I brought back four samples of water, okay? One from the river one from the area where the, uh, the people were buying their water, one from our, our kitchen, which they were making into coffee and tea, and one from our bathrooms. They all failed. They all had E. coli in it. Like when Father, you were talking about that you're walking malaria-filled water, you were. But, and the thing is, and I don't mean this to sound like overly pious, but that's yeah. what we, that's, I yeah. mean, you can't get more missionary than that. Now, right. be careful. And, and yeah. we, we take plenty of precautions, mm. but like what stands in the way of us being missionaries to the Haitian people right. is it, it's not going to be water. Like that's what St. Francis Father was all about. Like we're, break, we're breaking these boundaries of fear of being dirty. And now again, I'm not saying we should not be irresponsible, mm -hmm. but like all they need is someone to meet them there. Right. And Charlie, I think that's what the mission tries to do is that we say, okay, we're not afraid. We're going to be nope. responsible and try to stay healthy, but like we want to be with these people. Right. And this year we're actually having some people come down who specialize in water filtration and try and change the, 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 the drinking water that they are drinking. Uh, Brother Elijah, uh, who was stationed out in Albuquerque, he ran in touch with this name, a guy named uh, Bob Cody. And I've spoken with Bob Cody many times since, since we came back, and Bob is so on fire, and he's doing all the fundraising to, to give water filtration uh, kits out to different people. We've already given five of them out. And then weekly, the people that have the, the kits in Haiti, they have to respond to Bob's questions. So we're trying to change things a little at a time. A little at a time. Yeah, it's all about making, making a change 
each year when we go. I, you know, sometimes I don't think we do enough. But then other times I say, okay, Lord, okay, how much more do you expect me to That's do? That's what Charlie Moran thinks. It's like never, you know, it's never mm -hmm. enough. And well, more. <laughs> because I, more, more. I get to come home and I, and I, and I have a house and electric. I, I, you know, these people don't have electric. They, they, they don't have TV sets. I mean, but like you're watching us on TV, they don't have that because they don't have electric. Yeah. And, and it can just be so overwhelming, the poverty there. I yeah. think that's one of the experiences when you go down there is you just don't even know how to begin, but you have to begin somewhere. Yeah. And so just right. one at a time. And I think that's the be one of the beauties of, of this mission trip is we just we do what we can, and it is making a difference yeah. for people. Yeah. My wife came for the second time this past June, and she really didn't know how she was going to fit in. But like earlier when Sister John Paul was talking about just talking to the different individual people, well, my wife came up with her own project where we had some clothing that we had brought down. So my wife would pull someone aside who didn't have any shoes, okay, and, and she'd say, come up with me. And she would find them shoes, or if they had a, a, a blouse that was they shouldn't be wearing, she would fix it, and she would give them another one. And she's coming back in January. She's been, she's been taking clothes that people are giving us. She's sizing it. She's cleaning it. I mean, our, our washing machine goes constant because she doesn't <laughs> want to give out clothes that are even remotely dirty. This is how my wife is getting involved. And I'm thrilled because I've been going to Haiti since 2003, and it's taken till now to get her <laughs> coming down. So it makes it easier. Yeah. Um, in January, we're going to go back and... Uh, Father Innocent can bring, you've got some missionaries coming, right? Yeah, you know, we have quite a team, uh, Father Andrew. We have, um, we have, I guess, first of all, our, our, our community has decided to send our temp all of our temporary professed brothers. So the new brothers will be having this experience, which uh, kind of early on in formation, I think, it, it definitely going to move their hearts and kind of ignite that right. kind of missionary fire. And then also, um, we have a, um, we've started a new missionary program called the Franciscan Missionaries of the Renewal. And we have 10 young men who are living with us who are discerning and just have a deep desire to, to grow in, mm -hmm. in their discipleship with Jesus. And three of them who are, are doing a second year of service are going to come down with us too. It's going to be part of their formation. So, um, you know, we've got some, some young, young men from the Midwest that are going to go have this experience that I don't think they've ever had like anything like it before. <laughs> no. um, so, again, I think Haiti evangelizes. I think this type of work evangelizes yeah. mm -hmm. and moves our hearts and... Um, so I'm really excited to, to have the community like kind of make this an experience mm. for the brothers. Yeah, but, um, when I, was, I, you know, I pray about what projects we should come up with each year. And uh, when I was at the orphanage, I, I, I was talking with some of the uh, some of the volunteers there who don't get paid. The, the sister doesn't even have enough food to give them most days. And but they're sleeping on the ground behind the orphanage just so they can help. So we've committed to um, building ten. 15, I'm sorry, 15 houses and latrines for the 15 workers. Mm -hmm. Then the, the, the vicar of the community has asked us to build some houses for him. And then if you work for Friar Spice for five years or more, we build you a house, okay, because you're in my family, and I need to know that my family members have a place to live. Mm -hmm. So you get, a, you get a house and a latrine if, after five years. So we have to build, for, we're down, we only have to build four this year, one we have to fix. But, um, and then uh, we'll f f feed uh, 2,400 people like we did last year. A new project when it start, which I'm really excited about, is that, uh, you know, the ex expression, you know, give a man a fish he eats for a day, give him a fishing pole, and he fishes for the rest of his life. We're going to change it from fish to, ch <laughs> to chickens, okay? <laughs> so we're going to build 30 chicken coops, okay? And we're going to we're gonna put five, five uh, chickens in it. And they cost about 400 US dollars to build each one, but that's okay. They'll be owned by Fry Supplies. Okay, so if they, if they don't want, if the Haitians decide that they don't want them anymore, they'll be given back to us and then we'll reassign them. So we'll try, we'll be gonna build 30 this year. And there's even a, a very involved screening process as to how you get one of them. It'll be, because we hire about 90 people to work with us between Haitian workers, translators, uh, people that cook our food. We have security guards. So there's a lot of, we don't have to worry about who to give them to. I'm sure they'll have no trouble giving out the 30. But this way, they can feed their family. If we give them five chickens and they get five eggs a day, they can either eat the eggs or they can sell the eggs. They'll be responsible for a monthly report, you know, to, to, to let me know what's going on. And I have appointed uh, this, uh, this young man named Franz who is in charge of the reports and he'll, and he'll be responsible 
uh, for letting me know wh if there's a problem. Yeah. One of the neat things I think about this chicken coop project, I was there over the summer with Charlie um, and a group. And so Franz had come up with the first model of the chicken coop. And, and I guess, you know, I had heard a little bit about the project, but not too much. But it was just neat to see his excitement about oh. it. He had gotten another friend, one of our other translators, to draw the plans. Yeah. And a couple of them had worked on putting it together. And just to see them investing their oh. own gifts in right. something like this that will then go on to help the community. They were excited mm. about it. They were excited to share with us about it. And so it's just neat to be a part of that process yeah. and see I, their I, gifts I, at work. I told them, I, I hold them totally accountable all the time. You know, there's a cause and effect to everything in life, you know. Cause you want some chickens? Well, the effect is you better show me results. You have to give me results of how many eggs these things are running. You're such, I'm a, not, you're such a father. I love it. Oh, well. Like, <laughs> it's good. Uh, because I just think that, you know, if you're going to give them something of value, okay, and uh, we, we, uh, there is a section in, uh, in our DVD. If you go to our website, friarsuppliers.com, um, you can see the DVD, and on it is the, the pictures of, of, the, um, of, of the chicken coop. And there's also a section on the medical aspect with father that sister talked about. And there's, all, I mean, because it's, it's nine different sections. They're not long. Some of them are five. Yeah. I think the longest one is 12 minutes long. But you can pick and choose and see what you want to watch. And if you want me to mail you a DVD, just just send us an email, and we'll gladly mail one out. And we spread the word that way. Yeah, and I, Father, or Charlie, you had brought up the orphanage. And Father Andrew, we had talked about this at the break, just like sharing, um, sharing the like understanding the priesthood in context of this missionary work. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I shared a story with you just about being a new priest in Haiti. I had, hadn't been a priest a year yet, I think, when I was in Haiti. And, and uh, the experience of being on the work crew and like th these kind of things and, um, and being able to go to the orphanage and kind of happening upon this orphanage and, uh, and being with all the kids and walking in, have some of the kids being so malnutrition or malformed or mentally handicapped. Yeah. They were just orphans and they mm -hmm. were, some of them had no clothes on, they were all dirty. And the, sis, the, the care for the sister there, um, the, she just, how she loved them and cared for them, the, 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 the kids would just hold you. And I asked the sister um, if there was any of the kids that had not been baptized. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so there was three little babies that had been baptized and so it was just such a, I felt like so united to Pope Francis in these min these moments where I was just able to, um, the sister was there and she like pulled two godparents out from the crowd, <laughs> you know, who she knew to be reputable and, and in their chapel there in the presence of the blessed sacrament to be able to baptize these babies. Um, one little baby, his name was uh, Moses. Yeah. And yeah. to be able to baptize Moses and um, just to see the glimmer in his eye. And, um, and as a new priest, I, I was like, I can't think of a better moment <laughs> of my first year of priesthood than baptizing these little orphan children in, in Haiti. Um, and so it was, it, I mean, I can't, I can't say what a better gift that was to be able to be a priest in that way in Haiti. <laughs> when I went to the orphanage, and I, I didn't go in January, and I, when I heard that I had to do some work at this orphanage, I was like, Lord, I don't know if I can handle 35 handicapped kids. Yeah. And... Uh, this one night in January, I couldn't go back to sleep because I kept saying, no, Lord, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. And the next thing I know, I, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, and I was on the phone with Brother Elijah's <laughs> mother planning this trip about the orphanage because I found out that these orphans were sleeping on the floor. They had no beds. There was no water. There was no electric. I mean, these are just the barest necessities. And... The, the clothing, she said, was disgusting. In fact, we burned, the, when we went in jail, we burned the clothing that the sister had for them because it was in such bad mm -hmm. shape. She was like, oh, we can just clean it. I said, sister, you're not cleaning it. I, I said, we're going to burn it. It's in such bad shape. And we sent down, I sent 10 barrels a week down to Haiti with, with food yeah, and clothing ju mm -hmm. just to, just, just to let them so exist, you know. We don't, you know. <clears throat> My son just did a food drive at Kellenberg. Uh, he, he charged people to come to a dance, and I have a porch full of food, food. food, which will leave next week. And it's all, you know, pasta and stuff, and it's stuff that I need because I, I I need everybody's help to to make these missions run. I need, you know, I need the friars' help. I need the sisters' help. I need, 
all the people's help just, just to pay for this whole thing. And I need prayer. I really need prayer. I'm not a, I didn't go to college to learn how to do missionary work. <laughs> you know, it's all been on, on the job training, you know. But what's, a, what's such a gift, though, is the fact that you, there's so much fruit. The fruit oh. is undeniable. Oh, yeah. And so you can't, like, you can't, you said to me no excuses at the beginning. You can't, there's no excuses. Like, the, when the Lord blesses, blesses and blesses and blesses, and you have people show up at your door every day with mm. stuff for Haiti, um, coming from, like, Nebraska, Mm. You know, or like the Midwest. Come mm -hmm. on, you know, guys. No. <laughs> well, like they come from all over the, the United States, right? Yeah. To give pe to people in Haiti. Yeah. I mean, and then the the lives that changes there, but also the missionaries too. Their hearts are changed right. by going as well and encountering the people. Such you know, gift. you know, when I remember a story of uh, Father John Anthony when he was a brother, and he was at St. Joseph's, and he said, "Boy, I." I I'm going to pray to St. Therese because they used to call her a monkey. And she said, oh, boy, would I love to have some bananas. <laughs> Two hours later, a guy knocked on the friary door and he said, I don't know what it is, but St. Therese told me to bring these two boxes of bananas here. Can God, wants to, God wants to bear fruit. God wants to bless. Like, That's right. He give does. abundantly. Mm -hmm. If we trust him. Amen. He'll do that. Amen. Uh, well, let's see. We uh, got... Uh, Okay, we've come to the end of our program. Unfortunately, I didn't give you any warning, but uh, <laughs> we're going to give a little blessing for our audience. I hope you've been inspired by what you've heard and maybe even want to be a missionary, whether at home or somewhere else where people are in need. May Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now I make the fund appeal. You know, when Mother set up EWTN, she set it up in such a way that it has to be supported by the people who watch her, who watch her station. So I encourage you, uh, here's a nice way to help the missions, you know, but evangelization and getting the word of Christ throughout the world. So please, if you can, uh, support the missions with your prayers, support EWTN with your prayers, and uh, support them also with uh, the, um, <clears throat> not only for the, the uh, financial aspects, but also for the, uh, that the station may keep going and beaming out the message of Christ throughout the whole world for those poor, not only spiritually, but physically poor. And God bless you now. The Lord will bless you for your kindness.